good morning to all of you so uh, last class we have introduced uh, we have uh, discussed a little bit on g values uh, in radicals so if you have uh, organic radical how the g value changes <clears throat> and uh, if you have paramagnetic complex d orbitals so that can that has a wider range in which the g a uh, uh, wider range of g values so the that g values and and uh, the <coughs> is also affected by the spin orbit coupling as well as the availability of uh, excited uh, states the low lying energy states okay so this is basically the stirring up of the current the flow uh, circulation of electrons in a induced that is induced by the magnetic field so how easily that uh, you can make those electrons circulate that is uh, that determines g value that determines the overall uh, effect of magnetic moment uh, how much how easily the uh, uh, the magnetic moment can be induced and uh, what is the magnitude of that so all these things so uh, we today are going to discuss a little bit more how the the line the, that appears in the spectrum that can change with if you have different type of the g values that we are talking about is uh, sorry sorry it can be different along the different x y z directions so you can imagine s orbital you can uh, or p orbital you can uh, think of that the, uh, and you can you will realize that in s orbitals it will be symmetrically the electron distribution is symmetric all around the nucleus whereas in other orbitals like p d you will not have that kind of symmetry so of course of course the different symmetries will give you different type of g values different ease with which you can uh, make the electrons circulate so that's why we say that it is anisotropic uh, so the, the we, we talked about mixing of the orbitals along uh, that makes the electron flow so that mixing will be different for along different direction, directions that is quite possible in many crystals so if you have a single crystal a big single crystal then you, you, you keep it in under in one orientation uh, apply magnetic field you get one value of uh, magnetic moment so corresponding to a particular g value you change the orientation change the angle of the crystal uh, with respect to the applied magnetic field again you will have different values so that is what we mean by an isotropic thing uh, so in solutions the molecules are always moving if you have solid crystals separated out you, you are keeping on a uh, sample stage you will get these kind of things but if you have a solution then they are in uh, and particularly solution of low viscosity the molecules are in random motion and all this effect of anisotropic uh, g g value will be averaged out so they because they are constantly rotating the uh, the orientation with respect to the magnetic field is changing and you will not get any uh, difference if you have in, if you perform this experiment in a sol low viscosity solution so uh, this is what we refer to as g factor anisotropy uh, so uh, most of the crystals sing, uh, single crystals uh, rotate as i told you if you rotate it in the spectrometer you will get different values of magnetic moment uh, corresponding to different g values okay so uh, you can define as access system in any molecule we have done this this in symmetry classes in the first semester so you can have uh, g factors defined along the 
principal axis gx gy gz if uh, all are different if you, if you have a molecule in which in along the three, three directions you get different values of magnetic moment <clears throat> in that case you will have this kind of thing so now we are going to discuss an example of a mm, d metal complex where four of the ligands you can see the xy plane the four ligands are same while the two ligands uh, along the z are different so you can see the color coding has been done in the picture uh, which to show this uh, thing to show to highlight this aspect so if now you put it apply a magnetic field b naught and observe uh, the at what value of magnetic field it comes into resonance the absorption profile will be something like this that you see here and if you try to understand this you what in relation to the free electron versus electron when which, which is lying here in the d metal then this is how we do so see this first picture uh, in, on the, in this one so in this case what you observe is that the field applies it along z direction okay and so this one will have a so in, in the electron that is lying on the metal and which is uh, the metal is now having overlap with the these ligands forming a molecular orbital so it is delocalized over this system the de or, uh, the the molecular orbital that is formed as a result of this so along this you are having certain uh, the magnetic field can induce make them flow make them mix up with the other orbitals and make them flow so the factor that will change the overall g will be so this is for the free electron uh, g for free electron and just a moment so free electron and this is when you add the circumstances that now it is in it is not free it is now occupying a molecular orbital and it is under the uh, in this in this complex uh, so the additional factor so uh, that is we assign is that del gz gz so that is the additional factor that i told you that uh, the original g the free electron and the in uh, g for the electron in actual situation like this will differ by a factor which is given by which is related to the uh, spin orbit coupling and del e so that part i have already told you this one is proportional to um, proportional uh, i i should rather say that yeah this we, i told you that del g z or anything will be proportional to the change uh, so del z the spin orbit coupling constant represented by xi and uh, del e the next homolumo gap that you can say or the next field orbital versus and the next vacant orbital so that kind of thing uh, so this factor was there and so this is the additional factor along this direction in this direction is affecting the uh, overall magnetic moment that can be generated so you have the magnetic moment generated would be given by then uh, you have so the condition is now the thing is that we are if we have suppose we have a fixed source of microwave and we are scanning changing the magnetic field gradually you will find that some this will come into resonance if this factor is so uh, so that condition for b at which it comes into resonance will be 
the G into the Bohr magneton. Uh, Bohr magneton sometimes uh, yeah, you can write mu B and then the applied magnetic field B naught. So the magnetic field at which uh, this will come into resonance is uh, will be written like this. So this is the Bohr magneton. So if this G value happens to be higher, you expect it to come into resonance first. A little bit of uh, magnetic field is applied uh, and it comes into, sorry, uh, it will, so just let, let me uh, just, uh, let's first, I uh, will get back to the equation later. So just see this, what happens here is that you are getting two signals corresponding to two different, uh, so you have different, uh, so if the crystal is oriented like this, if you, you have a crystal and if it happens to be oriented like this, V0 is applied, you can see the applied magnetic field. So you have four different ligands along x in the xy plane. So if it is along x or y, you will have a different situation, different g value. Okay, because the orbitals used are different for combination. So, uh, so you get a different signal over here, b x y at a later. Uh, so higher value of b, uh, it is coming into resonance at a higher value. Now, uh, so if we are, uh, so this is what we expect in this kind of uh, molecules which will, which will show an isotropic effect due to variation in the uh, nature of orbitals used in, uh, in, in just like you have, we have d x square minus y square in used in for this combining these particular ligands and these are the different set of ligands along z axis different set type set of orbitals are being used so in this cases and we will apply and uh, analyze more such cases this is just a schematic for the thing so epr uh, spectrum can yeah it is also used to understand uh, transition metals in biological systems that is mostly in form of uh, proteins the as a uh, active site as a cofactor so biological transition metals uh, so usually as i told you th that situations which we would uh, where we would not uh, get this kind of anisotropic signals uh, when you have a low viscosity solution then the rotation is so fast that you get average picture so usually for uh, biological samples it is frozen because uh, yeah making crystal would be difficult you just freeze the sample then also you stop the motion rotation and then you can take the epr spectra record the epr spectra so freezing the solution uh, biological media and if that contains this kind of samples and then you can record thing uh, and you can understand about more about the molecule involved so uh, so this so either you, or uh, if you have single crystal you will need to change the orientation again and again but suppose if you have uh, uh, think of a sample that you have as a crystal you, is a single crystal now you crush it and make it powdered so each of then the the sizes become smaller there each of the powder that you see contains small small crystals or crystallites you can say and uh, each when you put it on a sample a sample stage on a piece of paper or any sample stage that you can uh, to record the data all these small small crystals would be oriented in a different fashion they will be randomly oriented on the scale so you will have all possible orientation you will get and so you will still get a uh, an isotropic signal so when you do this EPR analysis, EPR measurement. So I either freezing a sample in, in a, if it is in solvent, dissolved in something, 
that is one option the other thing is that you can powder it a, a crystal a solid crystal can be powdered and then make it in a powder form so in that same all possible or, or in one shot you will get uh, all the data uh, anisotropic signals also uh, so you don't have to change the uh, rotation uh, rotate the sample again and again to get uh, just like uh, that you have to do for a single crystal so uh, so without so a powder system uh, <clears throat> so that is a difference so when you do a powder versus single crystal all possible orientations are, are there in case of a powder whereas for single crystal you have to manually rotate it or something you have to do to get those kind of so this is a visualization of this that thing that you have a powdered sample uh, so suppose you, that uh, complex that we were talking about uh, it is the same thing but you have crushed into pieces so you, uh, all possible orientations in a powder the powder sample uh, contains all these uh, small small crystals and each one of them have random orientations like this so once you perform this uh, so all possible orientations are there now we perform the epr spectroscopy and the spectrum turns out to be something like this clearly showing that you have two different sets of uh, so this is the epr intensity versus the magnetic fields re representing the magnetic field that is uh, required to bring it into resonance for fixed microwave uh, frequency so different so it is a field scan uh, method which we are referring to initially to understand this spectrum so uh, this is this is the thing uh, so the selection rules in epr there's one thing that only this uh, sample which is a sample in the direction of the external field only it's uh, only the magnetic field that will count for your purpose okay which is aligned to the field of external magnetic field or they are lying perpendicular to the direction of uh, microwave magnetic uh, the mag there is, remember there is a magnetic field vector in the microwaves and the, which is oscillating and these oscillations are perpendicular to, to the direction of propagation so you can uh, also call it that if they are aligned with the external magnetic field and the direction of microwave is same so uh, they will be lying perpendicular to the system and that thing so if and under these conditions if uh, a molecule is truly anisotropic it has different uh, x y z axis different uh, electronic environment uh, under these uh, all these things um, if if it is equal so sorry there are two things if it is if electrons in different d orbitals have equal interaction in all directions then you will get equal magnetic moment in along x y z and so g x g y g z all will be equal so this is an isotropic behavior uh, so this isotropic thing uh, okay <clears throat> and the energy sorry uh, i was writing that oh i something i was writing there is mis I did some mistake so this is the h mu energy is given by h mu the resonance condition is this e you have to match e should be equal to h mu and this will be g into uh, this bohr magneton into the magnetic field this is the b resonance that we are talking about i was just making a mistake i wrote it uh, by mistake i just wrote that b on the other slide that shouldn't be, have been done in the first place. yeah okay okay so this is the condition this board magneton 
this is the Bohr magneton and sometimes in some books you will find that this Bohr magneton is also represented by beta so this is the same thing so the absorption will occur when this condition is matched and the magnetic field, required magnetic field is what we are plotting on the x-axis that at what magnetic field it is coming into resonance uh, so what you see here so this this graph explains this picture uh, slide explains to you all the things about the anisotropic behavior of the system in in this with respect to EPR so if G values are equal in all the last slide that we were talking about that e isotropic behavior gx gy gz so situation is like this equal interactions of electrons in the d orbitals with uh, uh, in all direction x y z then this is the picture of the electronic environment and for this you will get a single absorption peak like this and gx gy gz all are equal so this is how you relate it in the derivative spectrum it is here now we also have situation uh, where i you can have the z along z axis you have a greater value so if you remember uh, in third semester i had told you in spectroscopy they are uh, this is uh, so this is a spherical the sphere and this is what we are draw drawing a sphere here it is a prolate prolate spheroid so to represent different uh, electronic interaction like uh, polarizability or anything you can you rep you represent it with uh, spheroid oblate spheroid like this okay so along z axis you have uh, so this is drawn in the in such a manner to show that the when the magnetic field is applied along this the electron you have greater uh, electron polarizability they can the current can be induced they can be made made to flow uh, um, much easily along this direction so g z is higher higher as compared to x along x and y so this kind of situation is shown here so this is the two situations of axial thing where either it is higher or it is less so look at here now if the you are applying b naught along this along the z direction it is less uh, you, 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 the uh, applied magnetic field will induce a less current because the electron density is less electron there are less electron density along this direction as compared to the other two direction x and y so this is what we can imagine uh, two situations for the axial system gx gy are equal but they the gz can be either more than this or less than this Thing. so two different situations and so you you expect to uh, have a spectrum which will be differently diff uh, very different from the other so you see the look at this uh, let's go one by one so we uh, start with uh, discussing this one first okay so this prolate one where along the z-axis we have greater uh, value of magnetic moment you, you you expect a greater value of magnetic moment along z so the if the if it is having a greater value of magnetic moment it will uh, you will need it will come into resonance quicker so it will appear at a less value of so z direction the gz1 is appearing at a so this is the signal that you are getting 
and immediately after that even before uh, there's uh, it has not fallen to zero and you have the second absorption starts which is for the other thing so this is the absorption pattern that you are seeing and now if you see this uh, first derivative if you do uh, so this is d a by sorry this is the a versus absorbance of absorption a versus b the magnetic field then this one is d a by d b this is the signal that we are talking about so if you do the first derivative analysis for this convert into first derivative this is the magnetic field where you, where you are trying to you are changing the magnetic fields to bring it into resonance and the first one to it is easy the at a lower value of b the magnetic field the gz the it comes into resonance okay so this is the thing that you are observing in this particular kind of situation wherever you are able to generate more magnetic moment that one will come at a less you will need to make a less effort less magnetic field and you are getting a resonant condition there is absorption happens and under those conditions so this is g parallel second you increase the magnetic field further and the second uh, along in the powdered sample if you have other orientations so g x y uh, in the x y plane along x or along y uh, that will also happen and they will also come into resonance at a higher field so this is the absorption that you have. remember the x and y are they are two different two direction having same magnetic moment so of course there will be greater absorption uh, the intensity of the signal will be much higher so that is what we are getting intensity is higher the absorption is much high the signal is stronger and appearing at a higher value of magnetic field okay so this is the transverse x y that we are talking about x uh, y x y plane x y plane you have uh, so either along x or, or y that orientation you can have and each one of them can give rise to absorption peak which is appearing at a different value of magnetic field so this is the kind of signal uh, that you can see and what else you are seeing uh, here so in the second type where the gz is less so gz is less means you will have to make more effort it will come into as i told you this uh, if you remember this the h e is equal, i told you that e h mu and then I told you that G, Z, if you write this, mu Bohr magneton into B for resonance. This is the condition that we are talking about. So, B resonance will be what? So, if G is less, you will have to bring it into resonance. It will require, require microwave frequency is fixed. So, you will have to increase the value of magnetic field to bring into resonance okay so it will appear at a higher higher value of magnetic field so you see uh, the original spectrum and the first derivative dA by db here it is a versus b the magnetic field absorbance versus magnetic field microwave signal is absorbed so you see now the gz is less than the x and uh, the g value of x and y directions so along z axis you in, in because it is the g value is less it will come into resonance at a larger value of magnetic field okay <coughs> if the if you keep the mu fixed you will need to increase the value of b so that it comes into resonance are you getting that 
if we keep h mu fixed if my frequency is fixed this will come into resonance to match with the mu you will have to make greater effort and uh, the b will be higher value of magnetic field at which it, it will come into resonance so this is the resonance condition that we are trying to achieve condition where absorption will occur okay so resonance conditions uh, yeah so in this kind of thing you can see so uh, two things we have observed here when we are dealing with the axial uh, type of things the electron behavior is not same along uh, electronic interaction along x y z is not the same uh, uh, along two direction it is it is exactly the same but along z it is different so diff when i say different it means either it could be greater or it could be less than the nature of interaction that is happening uh, uh, the mag the magnitude of the thing that is happening on the along the x and y so in one in one part it, when it is greater gz is high it is coming into resonance quickly you can see here in both these cases and it appears at a low value of b whereas in the other case where gz is less it is coming into resonance at a higher value of magnetic field okay so imagine you have a fixed source of microwave then this is what will happen this kind of signal will happen. and you are get the second thing to note is that you will also obtain a signal for the x and y directions and that signal will be higher in intensity but depending on whether uh, uh, if this x and y g values are less than gz they will appear at at larger b larger value of magnetic field like here and if they are greater they will appear at a lower value of the magnetic field okay but they are the g x y are always having larger absorption because it is addition of two things like x along x along y so so uh, amongst the three possible entry two are uh, having same appearing at the same place same uh, value of magnetic field so the overall signal gets added up and you will see uh, things like this okay and the third case is a rhombic system where you have the x y and z all are different okay so in such case so slight absorption then it rises and then a peak and again so g x g y get first derivative gives you like this thing like this. Another important point to note uh, in this peak, let me just rub it off, then I will point out one more thing. So, one more thing in the derivative. So, in a simple case, uh, when you have a maximum intensity, in a simple case, what you have having at the peak position, when you take a derivative, the slope dy by dx is 0. So this is what appearing here at zero value. So you knew that. But immediately after that zero, you had a increase a, 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 in the derivative peak. You have a sharp rise, positive and negative values, right? You also had zero at this position. Remember, if dy by dx for this is also zero, here also dy by dx is dy slope is zero at this point so in the derivative spectrum you have situations where so this was zero this is zero but this is flanked by on the both side you have positive as well as negative signal in the derivative spectrum now uh, so the up, a peak usually in the derivative spectrum is flanked by uh, is appears as a zero but flanked on both sides positive and negative signals will appear immediately after that 
ठीक है नाउ व्हेन यू हैव जी व्हेन इट इज एन आइसोट्रॉपिक सिस्टम जी एक्स व्हाट वी हैव वी आर सीइंग हियर ऑल दो लुक एट दिस पार्ट देयर इज अ स्लो चेंज इन द ऑलमोस्ट सो इट राइजेस सिग्नल इंटेंसिटी राइजेस रीचेज अ मैक्सिमम देन रिमेंस कांस्टेंट फॉर अ वाइल ओवर हियर एंड देन चेंजेस शार्पली सो the point where it remains constant you have the signal dy by dx dy by dx the first derivative if uh, y and x axis dy by dx is zero right so this should not be interpreted as a zero intensity of the signal in the actual absorption you have very a finite value you are getting although in the derivative spectrum it is not flanked by positive and negative signals it is not associated with a two uh, one positive and one negative signal on the other either side at this point this corresponds to a significant absorption in the original spectrum theek hai and only it is due to due to the overlap of two signals that this is have this kind of situation is brought up so this is not to be confused that at this point there is no absorption when you are analyzing a, a first derivative spectrum i'm uh, just telling you again and again uh, highlighting this point that you should not construe this consider this point as having zero absorption it is having a significant absorption the change in absorption is not much it is giving dy by dx the slope gives you a change of the signal with respect to change in the x parameter so x here is the magnetic field and y is the absorption signal so the dy by dx remains zero because there is not change there is but originally there is a significant absorption but the absorption value do not change at at that point at, at that location you see that and that's why you are getting this kind so this is a signal so sometimes students misinterpret those things so that's why we need to be careful uh so this to define these things that we have we were discussing the anisotropic effect in this line shape can be so the line shape is getting an isotropic and uh, we to understand it better we can discuss it in terms of the angle it makes the magnetic field and the angles it make with the z axis and its projection in the xy plane that is here and then resolving that projection into the components so you have done this earlier also so if it is uh, so you, along this component you have so <coughs> so you can easily write the uh, if you have mag uh, along this magnetic field uh hmm uh, so we are defining with the mo molecular coordinates uh, what is the angle that magnetic field makes and accordingly you can have a uh, different uh, values which can be iz so you have cos theta this is if uh, this is the magnetic moment is also pointing in this direction mu mu then mu cos theta and the projection of this this will be mu sin theta and you have mu sin theta sin phi and mu along this mu sin theta cos phi so this kind of situation you can resolve in three different components using sin and cos uh, values of theta and phi and uh, yeah then we can so the resonant condition the magnetic field required for the resonant resonance can be uh, calculated by this equation v resonance so you just we, we are simply dividing that e is you are putting e is equal to h mu h e is equal to 
g into beta is the Bohr magneton and uh, so we were simply rearranging the previous equation that I had written earlier that was g into Bohr magneton you are writing here as beta and g uh, sorry g and the b resonance so b the magnetic field which is required for bringing it to, to the resonance it is simple the rearrangement of that and the expression of g uh, now dissolve into various components uh, with uh, respect to the angular momentum lx ly lz will be given by this so or in or in terms of the angles that we have just defined this can be g can be written in this overall g have all these values three components you take them together you can square it up so the three component that we have found and this is the expression for g axial simplified view so we can plot this and uh, so this is a plot of angle versus the b g value versus b so g value on y axis and the magnetic field g value and then you have angles uh, on y axis so 0 to pi and g value changing from 2.05 to 2.4 so there's few interesting things that you can see here that it is we having varying linearly up to this linear variation linear variation in the uh, as the angle changes the ma magnetic field magnetic field changes uh, the required to bring into resonance uh, the resonance field so we call it resonance field the b res is changing linearly in a linear fashion okay and you also note the other points here and look at the point here this point there is change in angles uh, near the zero angle zero so this in this region approaching zero and approaching pi by two so this part approaching angle uh, zero or so this is the pi by two here what you see that no matter what you uh, what the angle is the angle is changing but still the value of g uh, value the magnetic field required is not changing the magnetic field required is constant in this portion and this portion uh, b it is is uh, independent of the angle independent of angle so the same same thing here the b resonance is independent of in this part b resonance the resonance field is independent of angle that's what we see here and the in in the middle part of the graph you are seeing that as the angle changes the resonance field changes linearly so uh, so imagine a system where you have gx gy gz uh, with the change in angle this is how the things will change is relatively so that's what insist, insensitive to change the orientation in uh, at the when theta is zero or theta is pi by two so this is the angular dependence of the axial g value the angle theta between b naught and the molecular z axis uh, so this plot okay 
so i think we can continue with this in the next class and i will also discuss the kramer's degeneracy and then we will finish with this so yeah so this is uh, we will discuss some examples in the biological system the compounds the splitting pattern and then we will finish with the epr yeah so so uh, i'll stop here today and uh, we will